Today, we're gonna to be covering three different unique ways you can organize measures in your Power BI report. They all have advantages and disadvantages, and people are often opinionated about what the best way is or what the worst way is. But first, just a few housekeeping things before we jump into today's video. One, I am currently putting the topics that I are the various different ideas that I have for Power BI YouTube videos up for you to vote on. The video that's getting the most votes is the one that I'm making for that week. So that would be this video right here is the one that won this week. So if you have a Microsoft Power BI question, go ahead and vote in that poll for the video that you wanna see. Or if the answer to your question isn't listed on the poll, go ahead and add it in the polls comments. And I'll make sure that that topic is included in a future poll. This is a way for me to make sure that I'm making videos that you're interested in and that you want to watch. Second, uh, YouTube has a new feature called hype. If you like this video, it will then prompt you to hype the video. If you do hype the video, it really helps the channel and it lets YouTube know that this is a good video that it should promote. So if you could like the video and then hype it for me when that pop-up appears, I would really appreciate it. Also subscribe. Okay, without further ado, let's jump into Microsoft Power BI where I have taken the same semantic model and I've organized the measures in it in three distinct ways that each come with their own advantages and disadvantages. So here is the semantic model that our measures exist in. Uh, it's a galaxy schema. Now I have made a video on a galaxy schema that I will link somewhere down below, but it's a way that you can have multiple fact tables with shared dimensions in a Power BI data set. Uh, so you maintain the best of Power BI performance with star schemas, but you can have multiple facts. So like, for example, in this data model, there's a sales fact star, and then there is a inbound fact star, right? Or I just one connection. Now, these fact tables share the common dimension of product table, but uh, the sales fact table also has a singular dimension of a or singular date dimension. If we click over here into the model section, you'll see that we have six measures. So we have the act factory quantity, which belongs to the inbound fact table, the delivery quantity, which belongs to the inbound fact table, uh, a UI formatting measure called highlight color, an inbound quantity, which belongs to the inbound fact table, and then a quantity sold and a sales. And this brings us to the first way that you can organize measures, which is you put the measures in the table <laughs> or the fact table whose KPIs they are aggregating. And you can put them in a folder and then you can put them in a subfolder depending on what they are and you leave them in that fact table. Now this is an advantage because Copilot, it allows Copilot to kind of understand the context of the measure because it sees the measure in the appropriate fact table, but it leaves you in kind of a weird situation. And that weird situation is that one, you don't really have a place for UI measures. Like where are you supposed to put uh, these KPIs that are just a highlight color, right? Like where are you gonna, or where are you gonna put that measure? And then the other situation that it leaves you in is what if I have a measure that pulls data from both a sa the sales fact table and the inbound fact table. Where does it belong? It technically belongs in both tables. So that is a disadvantage. One, you don't have a place for UI measures, and two, you don't know what to do with these mixed measures where they're hitting from multiple fact tables. The advantage though being this is better for AI. Now, just a small note, the way that you can organize measures in folders is you can go into model view and then you can select a measure and you can put the display folder name and then you can put it in a backslash if you wanna create a subfolder. Now, what's also really interesting is that you can actually have a measure appear in multiple folders as long as it's contained within the same 
table. So you can put a colon right here. And then let's just say I wanted to put this in new folder, right? Uh, I should be able to do, 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 go over here. And now we have at factory quantity appearing in both the subfolder as well as in new folder. So that's just a quick tip for you guys. All right, moving on to the next way of organizing measures, which I think is the most popular and is what I personally do. And that is to create a measure table. Now, a measure table is an empty table that you create via Power Query that you then uh, hide and or delete the singular empty column that you have in it, right? So if I select this, there's nothing in this table. Um, and you can create that by in table view, clicking this new table, and then just creating an empty table. But this, I believe, is the most popular way of organizing measures. Now, the way that I like to do this is I like to create a folder for all of my UI KPIs, and then I like to create a folder for each table, right? So I created an inbound KPIs for all of the measures that are being calculated off the inbound table. And then I created a sales KPIs for all of the measures that are being calculated off of columns in the sales table, right? So this keeps those organizational advantages of the first method that we covered, which is, hey, you just leave them in the table you calculated. But it comes with one secret added advantage. And that is that because we're using folders that are contained in a singular table, if a KPI is calculated with both a column from the inbound table in this case and a column from the sales table, I can have it appear in both folders. So in this case, I have inbound quantity appearing in both the inbound KPIs and the sales KPIs because you know it's hypothetically using a column from each table. And again, the way that I did that is I went over here, I went to the measure and I used that colon. So like here it is, it's appearing in both folders. So this is my preferred approach, but that does bring us to our third approach for organizing measures, which I think is maybe a little under discussed. So let's jump into that way. And last but not least, that is using a calculation group to store the measures. Now, measures can need to belong to a table, but in this case, right, a calculation group, it's a table object. So what we can do is we can create calculation items and then any measure that is compatible with that calculation item, we can put in a folder called compatible and then we can organize by tables, right? And have our same table KPIs. Or if it's not compatible with the calculation group, we can put them in the folder called not compatible. And we can then again, organize by tables and have a UI KPIs folder. Now, what's really cool with this calculation group is we can also, if we go over here to model view and then we go into calculation groups, we can also create a calculation item where one of the calculation items is just base measures and that just always returns the selected measure. So in this scenario, right, we could hypothetically have a calculation group that would always be able to return a measure and then also is the parent for all of the measures in our Power BI report. Now, I'm not saying that this is going to be a, a thing, but using calculation groups to store and organize measures is something that you should maybe think about, especially if you already are going to have the calculation group object in your in your report because you're using a calculation group. Why do you need both a calculation group and a measures table? Why can't you just put the measures under the calculation group, right? It doesn't make any sense to have both. You're just kind of needlessly cluttering up your data model. So with that, I hope you enjoyed these three methods of organizing measures. I'll go ahead and I will link these files down below in my GitHub. And again, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, hype it, and then subscribe to the channel because that way when you're subscribed, you'll get notified when I post a poll asking what topic you want me to make a video on for next week. So with that, I hope you have a good night and thanks for watching.